Welcome back. Today I thought we'd go through a follow along timeline therapy session. I had a mother call me. She was very, very concerned for her son, but she wasn't quite sure if he would be willing to work with me or not. I said, why don't you have him follow along with some of my timeline therapy videos, see if he likes it, see if he is able to follow along and make it work for himself, and then get back to me and let me know how it goes. So to follow up with that, I would like to present a follow along timeline therapy session. So let's get into it. So the thing we're going to do, we're, I'm, I'm going to try and cover all of the possibilities that might come up within a timeline therapy session. And so you're going to have to kind of uh, follow along and write out the parts which are not for you and let your unconscious mind let you know the parts which are for you. And to do timeline therapy, you have to kind of enter into this spontaneous mindset. So if you're used to being very logical and you know, linear, you kind of have to let that go momentarily and just go ahead and get into an easy and fun and fun loving and spontaneous attitude just for a little bit, just for a tiny little bit while you're answering the timeline therapy questions. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to elicit your timeline. We need to see how your subconscious mind holds time. So you can have an idea of where it is and where it's going. And so that will allow you to float up above it using your active imagination. Active imagination, by the way, is a Jungian term. <laughs> we need to use our active imagination in this process. And it's really amazing when you start working with these deep subconscious parts of ourselves, amazing things can happen. Just amazing things can take place. So Let's see what we can accomplish today. So what I'd like you to do without thinking is go ahead and point to your future. And I don't know where it might be. It might be in front of you. It might be to your left. It might be to your right. It might be to your sides. Wherever your future is, go ahead and point to your future. If you're not quite sure, think about something you're going to do tomorrow or the next week. And where would that be? If it was some kind of spatial relationship to where you are now, where would you point to it? Where would it be? Where would you point? Go ahead and point. All right, that's your future. Now, without thinking, go ahead and point to your past. Where is your past? Where might it be? It might be behind you. It might be to your left. It might be to your right. Where is it? And now you see those two points, right? And if you, if you have trouble finding your past, think of something you did a week ago or two weeks ago, and then go ahead and point to it. Where is that? Where might it be? Okay, so now you have two points, right? You have a future, you have a past, and you can notice that those two points form a line. And very often, it's either in front of us, that's where my timeline is, or it's going right through us and our future's ahead and our past is behind, right? Those are the two that are the most prominent. And there's lots of variations of that. It can kind of skew a little bit. It can kind of go through you, but it kind of goes off at an angle that gives you more of a view of it as it's panning out in the future. It might go at a different angle, but all of those are okay. They're all good. And now we're going to use our active imagination very easily. We're going to imagine we're looking through our own eyes and we're going to float right up above that timeline. We, we saw that it was a line and now we're just going to float right up above it, right? Easily and effortlessly. And then just float out over your future. Just kind of notice your future. Get way up there so it's like, you know, it's almost a yardstick below you. Get way, way up there and notice your future, what it looks like, what it feels like. Now, sometimes people say, oh, I can't rise up. There's like a, a, a something blocking me. And I say, great, here's a trap door. You just open the trap door and now float right up. Whatever it is that you encounter. Oh, it's a brick wall. I can't possibly float up above. Great, I just handed you a jackhammer. Just, you know, jackhammer right through that. Easily, it's a super powered <laughs> jackhammer. <laughs> and you're right through, easily and effortlessly. So if our imagination sets up a barrier, we just use our imagination to go through it, easily and effortlessly. 
It's not too mysterious. It's, it's very, very simple. It's your active imagination, right? Okay, now go ahead and float back over your past. Wherever your past might be, go ahead, wherever your past might be, go ahead and float over it and just notice your past. Just float way, 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 way up above it and over it. And just notice what it looks like, what it feels like. And then come all the way back and come right back down into your body easily and effortlessly. So there, we had our little joy ride on the timeline. We've had an experience of floating up above it easily and effortlessly using our active imagination and looking through our own eyes. Very important. So all of that was our tour of the timeline. So now let's make it work for us. When I'm doing therapy with somebody, what I really like to do first is I'd like to find out what is the biggest negative emotion that you are experiencing right now. Because if we can have an experience of unplugging that huge negative emotion that's in our lives, that's kind of blocking us up, then we will have great relief. And even if it's all just in our head, it's not stopping us physically from walking forward in our lives, but it's, it's somehow this mental burden. If we can take that out of our lives, it will free up so much room in our head. Everything will start to look more clear. Everything will be more simple when we get out that huge negative emotion. So that's what I usually do. But to start, let's start with something easy and effortless. So I want you to think of a negative emotion that's in your recent past. Something that came up, a small one, that you're totally willing to let go. Maybe somebody cut you off on the freeway and you went, ah, this guy, this guy in the car in front of me, he cut me off. Something where you can think back, maybe somebody said something at the office and you're like, oh, I didn't like that. I didn't like what they said and I felt this negative emotion about it. And I'm totally willing to let it go. If you can find something like that, something small and easy where you look at it and you ask your unconscious mind, would it be all right to go ahead and let go of this today and to have a conscious experience of it? Yes, the unconscious mind is okay with that. Wonderful. We ask that before every negative emotion. We want to make sure that we have congruence and agreement from the unconscious mind or it will block us from letting it happen. So we're in this dance, this relationship with the unconscious mind using timeline therapy and we have to have that okay. And it might just be a feeling like you think about letting go of the negative emotion and you just, yeah, I'm okay with that. That's all we need. That's all it is. All right. So now that you know your negative emotion, I want you to think about it. I want you to feel it for just a second. And now the question is, what is the very first instance of this negative emotion? The very first instance when disconnected that will cause the problem to disappear. If you were to know, trusting your unconscious mind, was it before, during, or after your birth? Before, during, or after? Those are the three, okay? Before, during, or after? Which one of those kind of pops up? Just trusting your unconscious mind. I know you can. It breathes your breath and it beats your heart. So I know you can trust it. So what is the answer that just kind of pops up from your unconscious mind? Let's go over this again very quickly and very easily. So we already have permission from the unconscious mind to go ahead and let go of this negative emotion, this small negative emotion we're working with today to have a feeling of timeline therapy. So go ahead and connect with that emotion. Feel it for just a second. Make sure you know it's there, all right? And now, when you feel that negative emotion, what's the very first instance of this negative emotion when disconnected that will cause the problem to disappear? If you were to know, trust in your unconscious mind, was it before during or after your birth, before, during, or after. And if it was before, was it past lives or was it passed down genealogically? And if it was past lives, how many? How many lives back? And if it was passed down genealogically, how many generations back? What number floats up from the unconscious mind? If it was during birth, how, how many months in the womb? What number floats up from the unconscious mind? And if it was after your birth, how old were you? What's the number that floats up? Probably an early age. What's the number that floats up from the unconscious mind? So once you have that event, that very first event of this specific negative emotion, we're going to float up above your timeline. 
and go ahead and float all the way back to that very first instance. If it was past lives, float back there. If it was passed down genealogically, float back there. If it was in the womb, float over that point. And if it was after, float all the way back, easily and effortlessly to that early age. And once you get there, you're going to float right down into that very first instance. Now, if we were working with trauma, of course, uh, well, then you would want to work with somebody, of course, and we wouldn't necessarily want to float down into the very first instance if it was traumatic. But this is a small negative emotion, so it should be just fine to go ahead and float right down into that very first instance, seeing the things that you saw, hearing the things that you heard, feeling the things that you felt. Do you feel that negative emotion in that very first instance? Once you do, once you feel that negative emotion, you can go ahead and pop up above it and before it. So you're way, way before the event and above the event. And now I'm going to ask your unconscious mind to go ahead and preserve the positive learnings, whatever you needed to learn from this instance, the learning of which will allow you to let go of that negative emotion easily and effortlessly. And now, now what I'd like you to do is go ahead and turn along your timeline and look towards now. And as you look towards now, the question is, now, where's that negative emotion? Is it there or is it gone now? As you look towards now, I want to know, is that negative emotion in that very first event, just that one in that very first event, is it still there or is it gone now? As you look towards now, is it there in front of you or is it gone now? Remember, we floated up above and before it, right? So now we're looking towards now. So is it there or is it gone now? Now, if it's gone, great. Let's double check. If, it's, if you're not sure, great. Let's go back down into that very first instance and make sure that old negative emotion is totally gone now. Make sure it's totally gone. Look around, make sure it's totally, totally gone. Now, a lot of times it's already gone, to which I say, fantastic, well done. Now, if it's not totally gone, maybe it's 75% gone, maybe it's 25% gone, maybe it's 50% gone, however much. Maybe there's only just a whisper of it. Now, make sure we're, we're looking for the very specific negative, negative emotion that you wanted to release, okay? Make sure that's the one we're doing. Make sure that's what you're looking for. So if you feel something else, well, that's something else, isn't it? We're only looking for that one negative emotion. So now, if it's not totally gone, I want you to float back above and before where you were, where it partially released. And now I want you to float way, way back, twice as far, twice as high. I want you to go way up as far as you possibly can and still see your timeline and get way back before as far as you possibly can and still see your timeline. Look towards now. Now, where is that negative emotion? Is it there in front of you or is it gone now? That's right. If it's not totally gone, I want you to look towards now and I want you to keep floating backwards until it's totally gone. Remember, we entered this process because our unconscious mind said it was okay to go ahead and let it go now. So look towards now and keep floating backwards really fast, easily and effortlessly. Just float backwards, back in time through your timeline, whether it was past lives or passed down or it was in your past early life. I want you to look towards now and keep floating backwards until it's totally gone now. That's right. Easily and effortlessly. Easily and effortlessly. Just float way, way, way back as you look towards now. Good. Now, where's that negative emotion, that one event in that very first event? Is it there or is it gone now? Go ahead and float all the way back. Easily and effortlessly float right down into that first event. Make sure it's totally gone now. Now, some people like to cheat. They like to, oh, well, it's mostly gone. That's good enough. No, it's not. We want to make sure it's totally gone. If it's not totally gone, float up above and before. I want you to float down four times as far back, 
four times as high. Look towards now. Now where is it? If it's not gone, keep floating backwards, twice as high, twice as far back until it's totally gone now, easily and effortlessly. Once it's totally gone, I want you to go back exactly where you were when it totally released. Look towards now, and I want you to float all the way back to now, easily and effortlessly, but only as fast as you can let go of all of that negative emotion, that specific negative emotion, all the way back to now. Like dominoes, you just hit one and they all fall over because we got the first event, right? So you hit the first one and they all fall over. Just float all the way back to now, easily and effortlessly. All the way back to now. When you come to that next negative emotion, the one that we released from the first event, you're just going to notice that it falls right over as you float all the way back to now, easily and effort effortlessly. You might barely notice it. You just notice that they're all falling away right in front of you as you float all the way back to now, easily and effortlessly. Once you get back to now, go ahead and float right back down into your body, seeing the things that you see, <laughs> hearing the things that you hear. Now, how do you feel? Do you smell popcorn? That's a break state, by the way. We use that to break your state. So, how do you feel? Do you remember that little negative emotion you were going to let go of? And you could feel it, right? From a day or so ago or whatever. Do you feel that negative emotion now? Or is it totally gone now? <laughs> That's what we want to know. Is it there or is it totally gone now? If there's some left, well, go back and do this process again. If it's not, congratulations. You just did timeline therapy and you let go of a negative emotion. And it, it gives you so much power. I, I know that we did this. It's so easy. It's like five minutes with Forrest and I, where's my negative emotion? When you can do this process, and more importantly, when you can do it yourself and you train yourself how to do this, and you can evaporate all of your humongous stumbling block emotional content from your past, it's, it's this weight we carry around with us and we don't need it. It's just this burden we carry on our shoulders and we think it's going to make us wise, but it doesn't. It's the positive learning. So how, how do we know if a, if a learning is positive? It has to be positive. It can't be stated negatively. I will never do this again. That's negative, okay? You have to reword it in a positive way. I will, it has to be positive self. It has to be about me. You know, George is a so-and-so. That doesn't help me. I have to be aware of myself, right? So positive self future. I did something in my past. I totally messed up. That's not a positive learning. In my future, as I move forward in my life, I will be more this, conscientious, uh, considerate, compassionate, whatever it is. We're going to state it in a positive self future way to make it a real learning that we can actually use. It has to be, it has to follow those three rules. So it's the positive learning which will keep us from being in trouble in the future. And we might say, well, I, I need, you know, I need this guilt or I need this shame or, or I need this anger to protect me. And it's really not. In fact, those emotions will cloud your brain and they will cloud your judgment and you won't be able to think straight in the future. So it's much better to go through this situation again and again if you have to or do timeline therapy and let go of the negative content, get the positive self future learning and move forward clearly in our future easily and effortlessly. Isn't that a much better plan, right? So that's what timeline therapy is offering you. And it's a beautiful therapy. I think it, um, I would love every Kriya Yogi to know timeline. I would love everybody to know. This should be a common knowledge, you know? It should be taught in, uh, we should be taught this as a child. It would be fantastically valuable for all of us. So now you have it. And that is what I would like. So now, if you'd like to do this for all of your negative emotions, this is the path that Tad recommended. Anger, sadness, then fear, then hurt, and then guilt. And when you say anger, you might say frustration. Um, when you 
say sadness, you might say depression. Whatever your unconscious mind labels it, make sure it's an actually a feeling and not a decision, as decisions are a little more tricky. So we're just working with negative emotions first because they're the biggest chunks that are so easy to take out. And once you do, everything clears up miraculously. It's a glorious thing. So anger first, then sadness, then fear, then hurt, then guilt. If, you're, if your unconscious mind labels it as a different label, that's fine. Use that label because it's your gasalt in your brain. It's not my gasalt. You're doing the timeline therapy for you. So you've got to use your own label for the gasalt. So go through your negative emotions. Make a list of the really big ones. What are the big ones that I could, if, if I could be free of those, how wonderful would my, be my life, right? How, how wonderful would it be? So make that list for yourself and then start to go through them. Use this process and see what you come out at, at the other side because it's transformative. When you go back in your timeline and you change the emotional content, you are changing your story. And because of that, your personality will actually change. So as you clean up your past, your future becomes much more bright. So I hope that you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.